Hey guys, welcome back to another computer build. Adam here. Uh, we are going to be building what's going to be basically an office computer for uh, the downstairs of my house. It's not really going to do anything too intense. It's going to be pretty much for checking emails, uh, going to websites, that sort of thing. So uh, I'm going to be using a lot of used parts in this build. Uh, the only thing new in this entire build is the case, which is an Antec VSK 4000E. I actually got two of these for $25 each on Amazon a little while back and I hadn't done anything with them yet. I actually moved my workshop computer into one of these cases and I liked it, so I'm going to go ahead and do another build with one. Uh, we're going to be using this old uh, Cooler Master 550 watt power supply as the uh, power supply in this system. Uh, I have a rather ancient G4 6600 that's going to be the video uh, card. I'm not sure if this motherboard actually has onboard video or not, even if it did, I'd still want to use that um, just because I always have dedicated video. Uh, as far as the motherboard goes, uh, it's a Gigabyte P35D uh, DS3R. Uh, it's a socket 775 board. And for that, I have uh, Core 2 Duo E8400. It's the same processor that's in my workshop computer. I ended up liking the performance well enough on it that I decided to buy another one. They're like five dollars on Amazon on uh, eBay right now I have uh, two sticks of uh, one gigabyte RAM and then two more of two gigabytes so we're gonna have six gigabytes of memory in the system which I think will be more than adequate uh, an Intel PCI Express card and a Samsung 128 gigabyte SSD drive so those are pretty much the only components that are gonna go in here it's gonna be a pretty simple build I could have used uh, a micro ATX board for this but I didn't have one. I happen to have this board lying around, so I figured why not put it to use and uh, all that. So I'm going to get the case out and we'll take a look at that. Alright, so this is what the case looks like out of the box. I'm not going to be using any uh, optical drives or anything on this machine, so these are all going to stay just like that. It's a really light case. It does come with thumb screws, it's, but it, uh, it's extremely lightweight. And uh, it's a full ATX case, so we can fit our board in there no problem. And let's see what she looks like inside here. So uh, it's pretty kind of old school. It does come with a fan here in the back. Uh, it's a little bit old school looking. I don't know, just with this rolled steel here and the fact that there's not a lot of uh, options as far as mounting fans and stuff like that. It's a very basic case. It does have some, on the back here, uh, little ports, I guess, for cooling. Like uh, if you want to use water cooling, which is kind of funny for a small case like this. Uh, like I said, it's full ATX. comes with one fan. I don't think there is a fan in the front installed. There is an option to install one. We're not going to need it. Um, I'm not painted on the inside. It's just raw metal. I'm sure it's coated with something, but you know, it's not powder coated or anything. But uh, it does have a mount for an SSD here. As you can see, I don't know if you can read that. You probably can't because it's really far away. But uh, it has a mount for an SSD. Looks like you can put in one, two, three, like maybe four hard drives and then four optical drives I guess so uh, we're not going to be doing any of that stuff we're going to be putting in one SSD and that's it I'm going to get the other side of the case off and we'll start getting some components ready alright so before we get any further into the case let's prepare the board uh, and the memory and stuff so uh, this is a Gigabyte P35D S3R like I said uh, it's a oldish motherboard but it should still prove to be pretty useful I actually managed to, for the most part, to keep everything together with my boards. Um, I have the boxes for almost all of them. Uh, there's like, I think a random MSI board right now that I have that I don't have the box for, but other than that, I believe I have the box and original packaging for pretty much everything. I hope, yeah, I do have a um, the little IO shield. I was going to say, I hope I have the IO shield. I usually do. Sometimes I forget them in a case though. So. I used this board a long time ago, I don't know exactly how long ago, but it's been a while. But it should still be in good shape. Let's actually use the box to help do this. Get it out of its little anti-static bag here. So as you can see, uh, it has one, I believe this is a 16, yeah it has a 16 uh, lane P uh, PCI Express. It's got one, two, three. Uh, 1x PCI, PCI Express and the three full-size PCI uh, slots. It's got four memory slots. I think this can hold like 
maybe 16 gigabytes of memory, I don't really remember, uh, but we're not going to be using that much. As you can see on the back here, it does not have onboard video, it does have onboard audio, but uh, I don't know if I'll use the audio or not on this, probably, like, I might hook up the monitor that I'll use, probably, uh, I think it has some speakers, so I'll probably end up using that. Um, it's got eight IDE, I mean, uh, it has eight SATA channels, is what I mean to say, and one, uh, is this a floppy? Yeah, that's an IDE. So it has a floppy and an IDE uh, channel on board. So actually, you could put a lot of drives in this thing if you want with IDE and with the SATA. That's a lot of drive capacity. It's got kind of a funky heat, sh heat sink here, but uh, as far as I know, this board should work still. I'm always careful to make sure that these little CPU covers get put back on, so it should be in good shape. All right, so like I said, I don't know if this is gonna gonna focus here, but this is the CPU that we're gonna be using. It's a Core 2 Duo. Um, like I said, I've been pretty happy with the performance on these. I don't know if I'd use it for multimedia particularly, uh, but it can pretty much keep up on YouTube and stuff. I'm sure if I put a better video card in, it would do even better. I always hate getting these covers off. It's scary. All right, so what we're looking for is the little reference corner on the uh, on the board here. Let's turn this so there's a little better lighting. Where is our arrow? Looks like the missing pin is on that corner here, so I believe this is correct. Yeah, this is correct this way. All right, so we should be able to just close this down and that cover will pop right off. There it goes. Put that aside so I can put it back in the box. All right, so that's the CPU installed right there. I'm gonna get a little bit of rubbing alcohol and clean that off before we put the cooler on. All right, well, we get the uh, CPU cleaned off to the point that I'm happy with it. This is the stock cooler that we're gonna use. I actually had to buy this on eBay because I didn't have one and I didn't want to use a aftermarket one. This is only like 10 bucks shipped and it's a new old stock so it should be fine. A lot of people like to use aftermarket coolers. I generally don't unless I'm overclocking or it's a Core i7 basically is my rule. Um, this should be more than adequate for what we're doing so we should be able to just it comes with thermal paste already installed Hopefully that thermal paste is still in good enough shape. A lot of people don't like these push pins. I don't. I wouldn't say that I'm crazy about them either. But I've actually never had anything bad happen with them either. So I don't know. I think people worry too much about a lot of things, including including that. Especially geeky people who work on computers. They worry about a lot of stupid things sometimes. But. It's not giving me a real positive feeling. There we go. Like that one did not give me a real clear indication that it was in. Alright, so we got the CPU cooler installed. Um, I'll worry about the wiring for that in a moment. I wanted to take a look at these memory channels here. It looks like it's labeled right in between here that these are uh, DDR1, 2, 3, and 4. So I assume we want our matched pairs in the yellows and the reds. That's Usually how it works on Gigabyte, you can't always tell, um, but I think every Gigabyte board I've ever worked with has done it that way. So I'm going to assume that this one it does as well. So I'm going to get my memory out and we'll go ahead and install that in a moment here. Alright, so this is the memory that we're going to be using. Like I said, uh, there are two 1 Gigabyte and two 2 Gigabyte sticks here. Uh, this is one of the 1 Gigabytes. Um, so these are Corsair memory. I've, I was shocked to find that DDR2 memory costs at least as much, sometimes more than DDR3 memory right now on eBay, uh, more than new DDR3. So I ended up opting, I had these two already lying around, I ended up opting for just getting a, uh, the two gigabyte, uh, the two one gigabytes, uh, because it's a lot cheaper. Uh, these, uh, these two gigabyte sticks, they sell for like 50 or 60 bucks for a matched pair. Uh, it's kind of crazy, I don't really understand why DDR2 is so expensive but it is so uh, go a little easy on it I guess and I think we have this keyed the wrong way so this is one of the two gigabytes and this is the other two so we'll put it 
in the yellow. And then we'll put our first one gigabyte in that slot. I don't know if that went in all the way. I guess it did. And then finally, So this is, uh, like I said, those one gigabyte sticks are used, so hopefully they'll work. I haven't tested them. This will be the test. I suppose the processor's used too, so uh, <laughs> there's a lot of used stuff going on here that I haven't worked with before, so hopefully they're all good. They were sold as being good, for whatever that's worth. Let's go ahead and get our cooler plugged in. Alright, so everything here is pretty well taken care of at this point then. Just make sure that the fan can move without hitting that wire, and it can. So uh, I guess the next step we're going to do is I'm going to clear some of the stuff off the table. We'll get the case out, mount up the I.O. shield, and get the motherboard situated. Alright, well as ever I'm having trouble lighting the inside of the case particularly well, but uh, we got our I.O. shield here. It's just a typical, pretty normal I.O. shield. And it should install just like any I.O. shield on a modern computer. Let's give it a good push. Alright, cool beans. That, that part is done. Now, as far as risers go, it doesn't look like there are actually any installed in here yet. So I'm going to take a moment and get those out of the little baggie of goodies that came with the case and work out exactly where we need to put them. Alright, so as I've said before when doing this, it's really important that we make sure that there are no extra risers uh, behind the motherboard that might hit the back of the board and uh, short something out. So I've put in six risers, which are in the positions that would actually work on this particular uh, board, and I've counted out six screws. So if we use all the screws on all the risers, then uh, we'll know that everything should be good. So I'm going to try to get this thing positioned here and I'm doing it at this angle even though it would be easier probably to do this with the board lying down because uh, I can't get enough light in here otherwise and uh, I, my magnetic screwdriver is out in the other room out in the garage and I didn't feel like looking for it so I'm going to try to do this without my magnetic screwdriver which is probably stupid so I'm going to end up dropping things a lot more than I want to but we got that one started so Oh, it just came out. Come on, little screw. So, oh, you. Alright. Maybe it was a mistake to not go get the magnetic screwdriver, but I'm sticking with it at this point. Okay, after far more of a struggle than that would have been if I'd just gone and gotten the correct screwdriver, uh, the board is mounted. We got all six screws in. So it's just going to be a matcher of hooking up this case fan and the header is kind of hard to reach just because there's a heat sink right there but we got it okay so uh, I think while the case is still kind of empty I want to put in my expansion cards so the first one looks like yeah you know, we have to punch these out uh, on these a lot of these cheaper cases these expansion card covers punch out. I just grab a screwdriver and jam it in there pretty much. They have these little Phillips sized holes or slots in there too. And just bend it a couple times and try to not cut yourself. And it will break off at some point here. There we go. And then the next one that I want to use is probably a skip one. Let's go with this one here. So uh, this case is kind of flimsy. I should talk about the build quality, I guess, a little bit while I'm doing this stuff. The case is kind of flimsy, but um, I found with the other machine when I built it, as I put stuff in, it, it really uh, sturdied up quite a bit. And by the time the machine was in it, I think it's fine. Like, I wouldn't want to haul this thing around everywhere with me or something. But, um, you know, for a machine that's just going to be sitting around, I don't see it as being a problem. I kind of want to get these cables in this little slot in the card here if I can that will help 
with some built-in cable management there. A lot of cards really hanging down. And I always use these Intel Ethernet cards. I've talked about it before. But uh, I bought a bunch of these. These are from, I think they're from Dell servers. This one's a little bent. I bought a bunch of them on eBay for like, they vary from like 7 to $10 a piece, thereabouts. Um, this one's really kind of screwed up, isn't it? It's like it's all wa wavy and stuff. Hopefully it'll be good enough to get installed. Uh, I basically never use onboard Ethernet for any machine that I like to actually use for anything because I find onboard Ethernet to be largely useless. Um, when I changed out my NIC in my FreeNAS server to an Intel one, I went from the Realtek one, which is getting decent speeds, like 60 mega, megabytes per second on transfers, to uh, actually saturating the gigabit internet now. I mean the gigabit inter ethernet. I get like 112 uh, regularly. So that's pretty good. And uh, someday I'd like to do some experimenting with uh, trunked lines and all that stuff, see if I can get more transfer speed out of it. But uh, those are the only two cards that are going to go in this particular machine. So I'm going to tighten down these screws and bust out the power supply next, I think. So I've actually changed my mind. We're going to deal with the uh, SSD here first. I need to find a couple of these finer threaded screws to mount it with. And I believe on this case it only mounts on one side, but that works just fine. So I just slide it in, line up the holes, and put in a couple screws. Uh, the reason I'm not worried about this is just... SSDs are very light, and uh, they can take a little bit more abuse than a platter-based disc, so I'm not super concerned. I did not grab a thin screw here, did I? Uh, so I'm not so concerned about them getting thrashed around and stuff. Plus, like I've said before, this machine's not getting shipped or anything. It's not moving, so shouldn't be a problem. But uh, I think that's all the major components now, except for the power supply. Alright, well all that cabling down there is done to my satisfaction, so I'm going to jam the power supply in here. And... Trying to hold it kind of on alignment. There seems to have a lot of side-to-side -side possible motion here. Come on. Come on, little screw holes. What are we getting bound up on here? Alright, there we go. So I am going to try to get this bottom corner one here. Since this one seems to be the one that wants to disappear the most. Get that started. And this is definitely a case of not wanting to tighten these down all the way because there is a very loose fit here. Kind of moves to a ridiculous degree. Don't remember this being quite as much of an issue with the other when I put it together, but who knows, it might have been. That should all be good enough. Just for the sake of argument, we'll go in sort of a diagonally pattern here. And the power supply actually adds a lot of strength to the case, it feels like. And it gets a lot more rigid when you put that thing in there. Alright, so as far as the power supply goes now, actually hooking it up, this is going to be really easy. We only need three separate connectors. We need the 24-pin, 4-pin uh, for the... Uh, did I lose my 4-pin? I lost my 4-pin. We need a 4-pin for the uh, motherboard power connector. Motherboard power connector, where are you? Uh, those are video cards. This one is the one I want. And we'll get rid of you. Just kind of jam that stuff up there out of the way. I'll probably put a zip tie on it just to keep it from falling down into anything. But fortunately, there's not much in this case, so it's going to be pretty darn easy to do cable management. So every single little motherboard I think I've ever seen these, the little clip on the ATX power connector goes towards the front side of the board, like the outside of the board. Uh, I, I think that's standardized. I'm not sure, but it 
seems like it's always that way. So that's connected. And we'll just jam that in there. I ended up with an extra one of these somehow. Nice thing about barely having anything in a machine is just how few things there are to hook up. And I managed to hook my cables in in an annoying fashion that I don't like. Get out of there. Okay. So our four pin, doesn't really matter which one we use. So I choose you. And again, these always seem to go towards the outside of the board as well. Just make sure that we get that somewhere where it won't be hitting the fan. I'll fix it better in a minute. Try to keep this stuff untangled. And I usually end up kind of tucking it behind the board too. Um, up in the corner there because there's usually room to do that. So that takes care of that. And finally, our power connector for the SSD. It should be golden now. And I already took the liberties of uh, hooking up all those front panel connectors, the USB and all that stuff, so it should be ready to post. So I'm going to go get a monitor and uh, I'm not going to put the sides on yet because it's always bad luck to put sides on a computer before you've actually posted it. So I'm not going to do that today because there's a lot of used parts in this. All right, so I got a test monitor hooked up to it. Got a keyboard hooked up. Uh, I believe everything is ready to go. Where's the power button on this thing? Is the power switch on? Oh, that probably help if the uh, power supply was actually plugged in. That usually does help. I find. All right, let's try that again. Still got nothing. Power switch. Are you on? Oh, I saw the keyboard light flicker. That's usually a good sign. There we go. Fans are spinning. CPU span fan is not spinning. There it goes. And we have stuff. Oh, I missed the, the setup. So, the machine's working. I can't do anything right now because I haven't actually got anything going on it. What is it? What mode is it in now? What is it trying to do? no idea. Let's go ahead and turn this off again. And see if we can get into setup here just to verify everything. I'm gonna just be mashing away here. Come on. Setup? Computer? What are you doing computer? Uh, let's hit the reset button. All right, so the thing is trying to boot here. Um, I pressed setup. I don't know what it's exactly doing. I think the video card wasn't seated quite all the way, but I'm not sure what it's doing now. Hope we don't have a problem with any of that memory. That would be unfortunate because it's kind of expensive to replace. I may have to do a little bit of troubleshooting here. Uh, I don't usually have these problems because usually most of my components are things that I already owned. And so I know they work, but in this case it could be the CPU, or it could be the video card, or it could be the memory. So it's probably best to start with the memory. Let's turn this thing off and see what we can get going here. Just going to double check that this is in all the way. If we need to, we'll simplify the settings, the, you know, the the memory and stuff too, just to make sure. Alright, so I removed all but one stick of the memory and it's working just fine now. So I'm gonna play around with making sure everything was uh, seated correctly and everything. Because um, it's kinda weird, but see what happens. Let's just take a look at the setup screen here. Hmm, where's the memory listed on this? I think it has more or less the right date. That's amazing. It's got to be right in here, right? 
let's disable that because there is no drive A. So I'm going to mess around with the memory and see if we can get that working right. Alright, so I narrowed down the problem. It's actually uh, this memory stick right here does not seem to work. I took it out, I tried around different ones, and it seems to be a problem with this one. So I put in 8 gigabytes of Samsung memory that I had lying around, and uh, it's recognizing everything fine, it's booting up fine, seems stable. So I'm going to have to do some testing on that memory, see if it works in another board. Uh, if it doesn't, I guess I'll have to get rid of it. That's too bad, that's like 25 30 bucks worth of memory there, with prices the way they are. But uh, anyway, everything here seems to be working just fine now, so I'm going to go ahead and get the operating system installed. I'm going to put Windows 7 Professional Edition on here because I have another key for that. I have a key for 7 Home and 7 uh, Professional, so I'm going to put Professional on this one. Anyway guys, uh, that was kind of annoying tracking down my problem here, but we got it fixed, and I want to thank you for watching. Catch you next time.